Good morning, My everyone. Color. Welcome to yes. <laughs> welcome to Eight Bit Benny Mac um, with a lot of pink. He is not this pink exactly. in person, but um, <laughs> he, he claims that he was that color in 2012, and as was his display. <laughs> so there you go. Welcome to Application, the Typo Three Community Podcast. One, two. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. You can call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects, and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. On this episode of Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast, I talk with core project lead Benny Mack about his more than 14 years of contribution to the Typo 3 community and the slippery slope that led from a student job to scratching his own itch in the back end and as lazy authors everywhere like to say one thing led to another and now he is the core project lead. Benny claims that Typo 3 is still fun for him which is great for all of us who use and enjoy Typo 3 and the fruits of his and many other people's labor. Benny and I also talk about working in the pandemic and the value of really good noise-canceling headphones. So here's a little taste of Benny's history in Typo 3, what he's up to today, and also luckily for us, I can tell you that part two of this conversation will be coming to the podcast very, very soon. I hope you enjoy listening to this conversation as much as I enjoyed talking with Benny. Mac, this conversation is taking place in later 2020, as we can tell from your home level um, beard and home office and kids craft room and the fact that I haven't had a haircut since um, February. How's your year been? Well, um, I was actually, well, of course, the year started completely different in January, February than it turned out to be in March and April. So I had to get used to having lots of kids around. I have three and um, that's been quite good. But at the same time, um, I felt like a little bit of demotivation during the summer uh, in terms of like coding and the future and where everything's going, not just with type of three, but you know, uh, for myself, but that actually um, got better. So right now, <clears throat> as of November 2020, I would say uh, it's it's a really different but also good year for myself uh, because I'm, I'm still healthy. We'll see in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, but, well. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, from, from that point of view, that's, that's quite good and but different. And that's sometimes a, a good thing that even though you think it's, it's not as you planned. It's still a good thing that things moved a different route. So I like that. I guess we're getting a gigantic dose of perspective this year as well. Yeah. Now, just between you and me, would you rather have the three kids running around and doing crafts behind you or your 25 colleagues running around and doing crafts around you in the office? <laughs> Well, if the 25 uh, colleagues would do crafts, I, I don't know if I'd, I would like that. <laughs> but um, the three kids are really great. So it's not bothering me at all. Achim would come to you. Benny, can you help yes. me cut this out? <laughs> yes. And I have these great headphones. Where's the, the blue noise- crayon? <laughs> yes. The noise canceling headphones. I put them on and it's like, I don't want to hear anything. Uh, <laughs> and, Shutting and myself out. The... um. The head of, what was it at the time? DevOps kind of didn't exist. Um, The head of infrastructure at the company I worked at, it was one of those horrible group offices that I don't like much with a bunch of people in the same room. It was funny because it was like a very large L shape and the main entrance was at the end of the long end. And so that's where the reception area was and the 
the and the like the plants and where you brought clients for meetings and stuff and then all the way down you had sort of like HR and finance and then you had project management and then you sort of had um, you know marketing and uh, uh, sales was uh, in there and then you go around the corner and there are the developers and then behind the developers with an extra high cubicle wall was like the the operations and the sysadmin guys <laughs> and like at the developer area there started to be posters and Legos and stuff and basically by the time you got all the way to the back of the back of the room there were like permanently mounted nerf guns and you know large large dinosaurs and stuff and anyway one one of the guys of course to cope with being in a group office he wore super super sophisticated noise canceling headphones but his boss uh, could never get his attention um and we didn't have slack at that point what did you know, there wasn't a company internal chat. The VP of engineering had Nerf darts that said, Michael, turn around. Michael, look <laughs> at me. <laughs> he, would, he would shoot him until, <laughs> until they like she, brought him out of his flow. And <laughs> that's my wife is doing this. She's like, <laughs> she's, nice. she's working with the lights because nice. uh, that's how I, she gets my attention. So for I those of you, on. For those of you listening to the audio, the, the the visual to that was the lights going on and off in in, in Benny's room. <laughs> so, so Benny Mac, you you co-founded you co-founded an agency called B Thirteen, and yes. um, full disclosure, our companies work together, and um, but that's not really why we're talking today. You are also the project lead of Typo Three CMS, okay, and pro- it's a a, a, a larger project that um, helps th- thousands and thousands of organizations um, either, you know, run their businesses and deliver services or run their infrastructure, websites, apps, and so on. So, so you know, I think it's fair that people look up to you as the, as the coding lead, project lead. What is it? Uh, core team development lead? What's the title that you have now? I would say project lead because I, I'm not just the organizing the development, but also, you know, the the timelines and um, do a lot of coordination with that, um, mm. with other teams, with the Typo3 Association Board and the Typo3 GMH. I experienced the Typo3 project as quite community driven and quite democratic. I feel that they, there's a real marketplace of ideas and things shift depending on people's needs. Would you would you agree with that statement? Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the things um, people ask me and because they think, hey, you work at Typo3 because you do this like day and night. And I'm like, no, I'm I'm just a normal person, right? I uh, run a company um, doing the technical stuff there with 25 people and we're just um, doing Typo3 all day. And once I'm done with doing that all day, I bring the kids to bed and then I'll do Typo3 core all night. Fun. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and, and what's your hobby, Benny? <laughs> well, that's a good question. So um, I turned my hobby into a profession. That's why I started my own company. I like yeah. coding. Yeah. Um, of course, I have a lot of or a few other hobbies, <laughs> um, but Typo 3 is fun for me. And that's why I do it and not because I work somewhere and get money. Mm. Um, there's some, um, Casper, the, the guy who founded Typo 3, he always... Um, mentioned the scratch your own itch thing. And that's how I got involved in Typo3 because I used Typo3 um, when I was a student and um, this agency I worked for, they had a client and they said, well, this page tree is just too slow because we have thousands of pages. And I'm like, well, wouldn't it be great if I could move, uh, if, if I could make this client happier and because I, Maybe I can do it myself, but I looked up to all these people who did core development. And fortunately enough, um, these people were nice people. And they uh, treated me as, well, maybe you, you can do something about it. We'll help you. And that's how I got kickstarted, by, by building actually JavaScript into Typo3 um, back when there was no UTF-8 and all these kind of things. Mm-hmm. That was like 2005, 2006. So uh-huh. I like that. And uh, what version of what version of Typo three was that? When I uh, my first changes got introduced in version four point one. Four point one. So that was two thousand and seven, I think. So the um, 
the the core team at the time or the community team at the time was welcoming and 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 absolutely happy to to let you have a go. Yeah. And um, there, were, there were like forty people. Um, there was right at the time when Casper decided to step down and mm -hmm. handed it over to Michael Stuckey and um, some other folks that that helped me a lot. To, you know, understanding Tecmo three. And the fun thing was, I built this new component, uh, the the Ajax based uh, page tree, and then I felt like, hmm. Um, now maybe I can also fix some other issues because I feel like I get a bit of more understanding of Tecmo 3 uh, internally. Um, at the same time, everybody was referring to me because they're like, oh, that, that was Benny who built this page tree. You have to ask him how, how everything works. And now I was the go-to guy for the page tree and the JavaScript stuff, even though I'm a PHP developer nowadays. Uh-huh. And um and so every everything you fixed um deepened your understanding of what was going on and then the more you understood the more you could fix and did you just fall down a hole? In in terms of what? Fall I don't know. Down. Like did like one thing led to another led to another and and here you are. Um, yeah, um, mostly because I I'm I was curious uh, in looking into other parts of Typo three. Uh, once I understood the source code and it's actually. Um, quite okay, even though parts of it is still from 2000 and whatever, three, um, they, you understand the system much better. That's how, that's how I got into everything because I, I, I didn't understand TypoScript for like four years when I was just the uh, working at an agency. But once I read through the source code, I was like, ah, that's what they meant with the documentation. And then I fully understood the doc documentation. Hmm. So once I did trainings, I don't know, 10 years ago, um, I referred to the developers to read through the source code because it was just just the same way it was um, written was documented. And uh, then it made everything made sense. So I'm still the type of script guy. So I'm fascinated um, by the longevity of parts of the type of three system and the um, consistency and the sort of relatively conservative development paths um, the UX and the UI stays recognizably the same for long periods of time and changes only seem to come that really make sense. And by the same token, there's quite old code in there that's still really good. And there's been a long path of really um, quite easy upgrades. Talk about the, talk about the, I don't know, did that come from Casper's uh, uh, attitude towards code or why is it that, that um, you know, a typo three site can be online for, 10 years and still delivering a lot of value and still look okay? Um, well, Casper's attitude was actually, I would say more like I, I'll fix something and and it actually how he came up with extensions that was way before Composer and everything. He was basically, uh, he locked himself up in, a, in his basement for two weeks and then back then he came back and had the, the concept of extensions and the extension manager and everything built into Typo3. And that was that was great, but um, at the same time, it, it has proven stable. And replacing it with something else that was one of my major um, tasks in in uh, in the earlier years. Replacing it with something else should mean it's the same way but better. So it's you can't just throw away stuff. Well, you can do that, but um, some projects be some projects do that every few years. Yeah, well, we don't throw away everything, but some things just don't make sense anymore these days. So we'll get rid of these parts. But uh, the concepts, I, I'm still amazed that, of course, there are limitations, for instance, for the permission handling and, and the roles and, and groups. But um, it's been rock solid for, you know, intranets, universities, and regular websites. And I don't know why this system has been working, uh, but I don't see a reason why I should remove it completely. Hmm. So every time you you replace something you really need to have a good a good reason for replacing it. <laughs> and it's right. not it shouldn't be it's it looks uh, the code looks nicer or something like that. So I would say it's much more important to not just have um, oh we need to have every PHP strict types thing going but actually um, at the same time when you do refactoring come up with um, a better 
um, or more flexible solution that that uh, extension authors could use, for instance. Mm. Can you compare the first version of Typo3 that you worked with with Typo3 now? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, well, I would say it, currently there are some parts that are a mess in terms of PHP code. But you're not that, supposed to say that. It's the that it's is the, my impression. It's the it's, best. It's, <laughs> yes, I, I can Like the one thing that's really cool is that when I, when I started with Typo three, everything was um, PHP object oriented, class based already. So there in was two thousand and three. No, well, two thousand and three, I started with it, and once I looked at the the internals, like two thousand and five, two thousand six. Yes. Mm. So that was really cool. Um, of course, you didn't have all the cool stuff that PHP 7 or PHP 8 offers now. But um, so, so if I say messy, we get we are already at a very good point. What I would call messy, <laughs> uh, or what I would would have called back then, and some clever things uh, were there in, uh, as well. And the one thing I would say that is different back then, there were like seven iframes in in Typo3 in the back end where he it reloaded any other iframe all the time, um, maybe because it was faster and it was hiding some functionality and reloading and it felt very complicated, even more technical than it does right now. Like there was like a link, not even a button that says clear caches in Typo3 temp. What that, what does that mean? Like <laughs> the old, the old, interface, um, and I mean uh, 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 version four days, was not as pretty as the one now. Yes. Let's, let's just say it. It. Um, I think I am on record in public as comparing it to the control panel for a nuclear submarine, so. <laughs> Maybe, yes. <laughs> um, so... So, um, so fast forward from that to to the sort of experience that people have today. Well, today you still have the concepts, and maybe, um, and we still have two iframes, <laughs> but um, that is also part of the, the the historic part because, of course, we could throw everything away and uh, don't do iframes anymore. But then everybody would need to start from scratch, and even though the the steps that we've taken in the last five years have been um, heavy for some. We always had a migration path to it. So you always had a chance to use your existing site and upgrade. And that, I don't know, that that was like a, a given fact. There's <laughs> no, no possibility to do something else. Um, but at the same time, I, um, I would say um, you know, back then when we had Typo three version four, that was I would say in maintenance mode, and we have the we had the Typo three um, back then. It was called Phoenix Team version five team. Um, they had the chance to reinvent a lot of these things, and I think that was a actually cool idea to split that off in, in two parts. Um, and until then. We decided to to stick to this mode, maintenance mode and don't do larger steps. The largest step was between version four and version six. Mm. Um, when we upgraded, we we left out version five, and of course some people do that, um, and then um, jumped to version six, and that was difficult but still possible to update. Um, and then since then we had smaller changes that were um, still complicated to update for some people, but but at the same time, much easier than the, the difference between version four and six. Mm. So um, this this given fact that we 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 want to upgrade um, also comes from the fact that maybe now people want headless and all the new things. Typo three is like the opposite there because we, we don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel for everything, just for some parts. And if we just take one part and look at that, that's that's a much more um, contained refactoring. Because mm. um, some people compare Typo3 to other PHP frameworks like um, Laravel and Symfony, and it's like, oh, it's so easy to update there. Yeah, there is a difference because Typo3 is not a framework per se. You actually have, um, you can handle database 
um, content in the database. You handle uh, some special typo script configuration and you have an interface and none of these systems have that. So yeah. how do you upgrade that uh, in the past 15 years? So you can't really compare um, the the backwards compatibility between the two of them, but um, and there's a lot more. There's a lot more complexity, and it's 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 built to handle a different set of requirements when you set it up. Yeah, if you compare a type of three to any other, um, you know, system where you have a, a an interface, it's been similar, but it's getting uh, to to 15 years ago, but it gets modernized and faster because we use we can use. We don't have to worry about IE6 anymore. I want to ask you about two things based on what you just said. Um, upgradability and that sort of how much you... So the, the, the current sort of thinking seems to be around helping end users and and content authors and so on have a great experience and the and the back end is usable on mobile and it's 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 clear and 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 all of that but um i think the system is still really super friendly to developers and there's in every typo 3 installation i was amazingly impressed that you can it, it documents all of the deprecations and all of the code changes and will do an analysis of extensions that you've plugged in or written yourself to tell you how upgradable it is and to help you build your upgrade wizard, right? To help you automate your 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 update all the way at least back to version six, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think version seven is when we started with a new um, mode of development, a new release cycle and all these kind of things that have been, we've, We've been discussing this for a long time, but version seven was like the, that was right after the decision to not have two content management systems under the type of three roof and actually have Neos um, be their own brand and, and kickstart that. And that made a lot of sense, but at the same time, it op uh, opened up a lot of freedom and, and energy to develop type of three further. So I think this decision was a, a lot of um, energy for both parties. And so that was really, really cool to see. So the upgradability since then um, was improved over and over again. And, and we're still looking into ways to even make updates much easier still with, you know, Rector and all these um, migration paths that, mm. that just uh, came up recently in the past years. So there's even more to do. There's always going to be something to do, right? Yes. <laughs> and by the time you've come on and done everything, you're going to look at the at the thing you started with and you're going to know how to do it better again and then you're going to yes. you're going to keep going. But one one story I wanted to share is with version 7 when we decided to to revamp the, the back end when some people approached me and they were not happy with the changes because they said now I have to teach all my editors again how it's it's going to be used even though the the concepts are the same it just looks completely different in terms of the sidebar the module menu is now black and uh the gray is gone a bit and these kind of things and they're like we have to update not just the system but all our documentation and that will take a while promise me you won't do that again in version 8 and I'm like, okay, I'll uh, I'll wait a couple of versions for that. <laughs> <laughs> Promise me you won't make my CMS better, okay? <laughs> yes, exactly. But but there's that's that's part of the the thing is that you see that there's much more to it than just updating the code base. Yeah, and we need to have that feedback as well. So my perception of Typo three CMS and its sort of differentiation from worthy competition in the market is that it's a it's a professional tool for professionals it's um the, the the bulk of the community is agencies and it's really designed for a typical agency use case which is sort of big sites with lots of information and then people have to take care of that i feel that the back end is quite pragmatically designed um and and the the hierarchical page tree lets me figure out where i am on the site quickly and, and all that sort of thing um I hope you agree with that, but the I point don't. of- Oh, you don't? Cool. Okay. No. Cut that part. <laughs> yes. No, I, I well, can tell you why. The bit that I was getting to, and I'm, I, I want to go pull apart what you think I said wrong now, because that's cool, um, <laughs> is that with this idea of the longevity of, of, of Typo3 and the rise of 
actual business cases for quote unquote headless and decoupled systems where we have apps or web services or front end frameworks that we want to feed. Um, Typo 3 has always essentially been uh, decoupled, right? There's there's always been a back end system and a scripting layer that you can um, have sort of, you can leave the core how it is and make modifications as things are going in and out. And then you could do whatever you want in the front end. And, and it seems to have been an incredibly uh, smart choice before we even knew that we were gonna need those sort of systems. And um, I, ha, do you think that that's given Typo3 some extra some extra longevity and, and relevance now? Yeah, totally. If you think of uh, like newcomers complain that there's no, no website out of the box, no themes, no templates, yeah. which I partly agree. That is uh, cumbersome, but at the same time, um, you can do whatever you want and you're responsible for that part. And that means if you update Typo3 to version 10 or 11 um, from version whatever, and the front end should stay largely the same because that that's your responsibility. Right, and, and the, 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 the Typo3 core is input and output agnostic, right? Any yeah. data source with the file uh, abstraction layer and any any sort of output you want, it doesn't have to be a website. Yeah. Exactly. So I've I've heard so many fun stories that what people use type of three for that it's not a website. We had projects where we printed magazines with it, um, and because you can do XML, um, it doesn't. If you really like, have to. <laughs> yeah, or like like an RSS feed is like that's not built in, but it's something that type of three is capable out of the box. Right. And, and that's why it's. It's partly opinionated, but at that level, it's not opinionated. It's mm. up to you. Oh, you know what? On on the visual version of this, I have to put that meme of the guy sitting at the desk. Typo3 <laughs> is a professional tool for agencies. Change my mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So talk about talk about your perception of w what is Typo3 CMS and, and, and who is it for and what's it for? Of course, there's the badge of enterprise CMS. And um, that doesn't mean, in my opinion, that you need to have a, a workshop to understand how to use it. Uh, I mean, I would love to have a workshop about, about how I could use Microsoft Excel properly, uh, even though I can still use it. <laughs> and you can do so many uh, cool things with it. Type of three, I would say if I use it, it's, it's complicated um, to, to get a feeling for it if you have never used it. And there are much more uh, systems that are much more uh, focused on the end users. But at the same time, you have a very large um, group of people, like a, a range of people, the, the ones who use it once a month and then the ones who are working collaboratively for um, each day with 20 people in the same system. Um, um, when you say they it's- they know everything. When, uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry for interrupting, but when you say it's um, complicated or difficult to use when you first approach it, do you mean as a, as an end user, work jumping yes. around a back end, or do you mean as a developer? As an end user, I find the the back end nowadays uh, well you're excitingly exactly intuitive, right. but I guess I use it right. So yeah, so, yeah. If you use it, I feel like there are a lot of small things that can be improved to make life easier. Back then, and 15 years ago, there were some nice concepts about you know having workflows for doing like I want to create a new news uh, article and putting two images in there and you always need to have an image because that's how you know the, the front end uh, works and then you have to assign two categories and you have that's your requirement that's more like a jira i would say and mm -hmm. that's typo3 that's missing in typo3 at the same time because of this decoupling that's also another uh, fun story <laughs> the if you talk about decoupled systems or headless systems especially headless is like You'll feed something in there and you'll take something out there somewhere else for your app or whatever. Uh, and you still need to have people who feed the system with, with content and you need to have an interface. And yeah, that's what Typo3 is doing. So it's actually a content management system. It's not a, a you know, content output system. It's part of that is that the front end, but the, you, you are able to manage content and headless uh, or yeah, headless systems don't have a management interface, but sometimes they do. But I would say with a fraction of the possibilities that type of three You mean the, the front end systems in general? Yeah. So we have, with type of three, we have a solution that has been proven for 15 years 
and people apparently people still like it so it couldn't be that bad it's not COBOL or whatever you want to develop in or uh, some DOS GUIs um, or <laughs> interfaces you have something that's actually working and that's good yeah. I still think it's um, for people who are uh, younger than you or maybe me who who are used to living in the web 24 7 that there's so much more to improve um, in type of three that that should be tackled. Well, you can use it in agencies and larger corporations, also for editors. But also, uh, I know a lot of people who use it in their for for their fun projects, and they they use that back then, and they oh. still like it, and um, it has been valuable for them. And I would like to um, tell the younger generation that it could be valuable for them as well mm. if they try it out. And so. You don't have to work in an agency to use Type Three, right? Okay, um, okay. So let me reframe. Let me reframe my my contention from from five or ten minutes ago. The majority of the Type Three community, I think, over time and certainly nowadays, is in the agency world and um, building client websites is the majority of what agencies do with the CMS and the tools that are built into the core. Um, and the way the core is put together makes it possible to deliver great client projects with minimal plugins, with minimal customization, and all of the plugging in and the customizing is is completely accessible because of of, of the solid architecture and so on. So, so I guess what we're moving towards is those tools that make it great for agencies to build great client websites. Actually, that's great if I want to build whatever sort of it sounds silly, but you know, information-focused website like some built-in photo editing capabilities, like the page tree orientation, like the really solid user experience, like workspaces and versioning and permissioning and so on. So that makes it, you know, okay. So then we're back to, hey, it's a good CMS. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and there's so many things that we take for uh, for granted uh, in Type Three. And there where we're just shaking our heads because I, I just had the, the requirement, hey, we want a system where it actually, I can upload my, my image, which I want to display on my website in the full uh, size and it just automatically resizes. And then like, I've never seen a type of three version where this was not possible. So it's been possible for decades. Mm. Um, and then there's the, the the small details, as you mentioned, is like I, I want to replace one file which I've used uh, some PDF I used like 20 times on my website. I want to replace it in one place, and you can do that with the file abstraction layer. Mm. And these are the things that people just um, they don't know that they want to have that in the first place, but they're getting there. So that's um, that's a good thing that once they've chosen Type of Three, that they don't have to worry about these things anymore. Nice. And at the same time, for the end users, I can't um, really decide if the majority is um, agencies. Agencies maybe that build the websites, but people who use the websites are like, that's crazy. Because I, like from my friends and families, I get sometimes I get a picture of, hey, look at my um, my workplace computer. I get a Type of 3 message. You do something with Type of 3. It's like, oh, yes. Nice to see that your hospital internally uses Type O three. I yeah. never know that. Of course, never known that. And or end like, users, end users are are everywhere, right? Governments, yes. and hospitals, and universities, and companies, and clubs, and they don't know, even know and, that they're using Type O three. Exactly, exactly. Hey, so let's shift gear a little bit. Thanks to the Type O three Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B thirteen and Stephanie Kreutzer for our logo. Merci beaucoup, Patrick Gaumont, Typo3 developer and musician extraordinaire for our theme music. Thanks again to today's guest. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe in the podcast app of your choice and share application, the Typo3 community podcast, with your friends and colleagues. If you didn't like it, please share it with your enemies. Would you like to play along and suggest a guest for the podcast? Do you have questions or comments? Reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on typo3.org. Remember, open source software would not be what it is without you. Thank you all for your contributions.
I know. Uh, nice chainsaw hat. Yes. Country. Um, 